Today at Deutsche Auto Parts, we're going to be discussing intercoolers. Okay, so before we get into intercoolers and how they work and the different kinds, let's talk briefly about the turbo system and how it functions just so we know how an intercooler plays its part in that system. So turbocharger is basically a compressor. It compresses air to create more air to force into the engine for the combustion process. Now what happens is air flows in through the intake into the turbo, out the turbo once it's been compressed through the intercooler and then into the engine. Now the reason why the intercooler is required is because the compression process of that air coming out of the turbo creates more heat. Colder air is more dense and also has more oxygen. Hot air also tends to have potential issues with ignition inside of the engine. Therefore, we need to cool it down, which is the main function of an intercooler in a turbo system. So, when we talk about different intercooler types, we have our factory intercooler types, and then we have aftermarket ones or performance intercoolers. Generally, factory intercoolers are going to be there are two main designs for intercoolers, tube and fin and bar and plate. Generally, most factory intercoolers are going to be tube and fin design because they are lighter, they are cheaper to manufacture, and they still function pretty much uh, fairly efficiently, at least for, the, for the, what you need to do for a standard factory vehicle. Now, when you get into bar and plate designs, that's going to be something that you see mostly with performance intercoolers because they flow better, they're more efficient, and everything else. So here we have our Golf front mount intercooler on a Mark 7. Uh, this is for a Golf R. If we take a look, here is our tube and fin design. And if you take a look at the either edges, this is where you can really see the tube and fin design because the tube actually runs in and there's a seam at the end tank. Now, these are great because they're light. Uh, very, very light, especially because this one is tube and fin, plus it used uh, composite end tanks. This is probably going to be about a third of the weight of a performance version of this intercooler because the core is going to be thicker. This is the intercooler core. It's going to be thicker to, to create uh, more efficiency for that because when you can't go wider, which is what you need to do to create uh, more cooling, you have to go thicker to create more options for the air to pass through and cool down the charge air that's coming through the intercooler itself. It will come out in one side and out the other and then go into the engine. So as we can see, this is a tube and fin design. If you were to have a design that's bar and plate, they are solid all the way through. If you take a look at this picture, it shows the comparison between the two. If you look, a bar and plate design is a lot smoother. The end tanks are a lot smoother. And if you look at this, uh, at this example here we have, when you have a tube and fin design, there are the tubes that run through the end tanks and at either end, the tube will actually raise above the edge of the intercooler. This creates some flow problems. So for perfect performance, it's not the ideal situation when you have a, a raised edge for where the airflow needs to go into. It creates a little bit of turbulence for the air having a flat flush finish like a bar and plate design would actually promote a much better flow through the intercooler itself, less turbulence, and overall better efficiency of the intercooler itself. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the most common reason as to why you would wanna put an upgraded intercooler on your vehicle, and that is heat soak. So basically what heat soak is, is essentially as a vehicle is running, taking pulls on a track, or just driving around town, the ambient air temperature of the engine and all everything flowing is going to create what's called heat soak. That means that you have a lot of hot air in the intercooler and all around it. It's creating a lot of heat and the intercooler cannot keep up with the amount of heat that you are dealing with in the engine. Now upgrading that doesn't necessarily gain you power when you upgrade to a, a larger intercooler. What it does do is it prevents you from losing power in the event of a heat soak issue. So a more efficient intercooler core that's thicker will bring the temps down further 
if you have a heat soak problem and the temps continue to rise, whereas this intercooler will only be able to do so much and, and prevent you from losing so much power. Okay, so just to reiterate once again, intercoolers do not gain you power, but they also prevent you from losing power in the event that you have a heat soak problem or in any temperatures that are warm, especially when you get to any, any temperature, probably late spring, summer, early fall, potentially intercoolers are a good option for you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to check out more like it. For more information about the products featured in this video, check out our website at shopdap.com.